Hello my friends and welcome back. <clears throat> it's time for the Battle of Pindus. It's time for a deployment episode. I've just unequipped all of my tanks and all of their heroes, apart from two. Um, just to speed things up in the deployment episode, because no one wants to watch me unequip, unequip like ten units. Um, I shuffled away my anti-air and all of all of my air force. Following the mission briefing that says the aircraft are going to be useless, I have gotten rid of my AA guns and gotten rid of my tacticals and uh, dive bombers, um, strat bombers. Sorry. Um, so what I've done is I've decided to keep my two fighters. So this is this is where we get into the actual deploying for the mission. Kept my infantry as is. No need to change them. <clears throat> they still need experience. They're still the right tools for the job. Um, kept my two tanks that are training. Uh, the Panzer 3H is now here. It has arrived. <clears throat> Which is just the slight upgrade to the G. So it's no longer a prototype. Um... And what I've done is I've kept my two fighters, Galland and Bar, exactly as they are. Because if there is enemy aircraft, then I'm going to want to be able to shoot them down. <clears throat> and if there isn't, then they can be used for scouting and strafing. Now one thing that I am tempted to do is, obviously I'm running the Hurricane with Bar, which has got some reasonable ground strafe capability. I'm tempted to run the D520 for Galland. It's a slightly inferior fighter, but it has two extra range, which is just going to give me a little bit more reach. Okay, all right. So the first thought in my head was this group here is surrounded. If it's not surrounded, it soon will be. So I thought, oh, you know those 20 stacks of paratroopers, auxiliary ones? I'll use them. I've got three transport planes. Why don't I load up those and just fly them across the map and dump them here and actually break this? Um, and the issue with that is, is that those auxiliary paratroopers that I bought have disappeared. So I'm never going to get to use them because they're gone. <laughs> so that was a horrible waste of money. That was 426 prestige that I'll never see again. Or however much it was. Yeah, 426. I mean, I'm fabulously wealthy, it doesn't matter, but it does annoy me that they disappeared like that. Okay, so, I've decided it's going to be auxiliary paratroopers. We can't buy them right now, because I have to use up my main core slots first. So the real question is, given a basic setup of some reconnaissance, some artillery, and some tanks, the pretty standard setups that I have here, What do we go for? And I think the answer for me is to just take tanks. Because if you think about it... So if I send the paratroopers down here, I'm pretty sure we can break this. I don't know what is here. But if I drop 20 stacked paratroopers here, here, and here, I'm pretty sure that we can break this and get these guys through. Um, I mean, if there is a freaking, you know... If there's 20 units waiting here, then maybe not, but I doubt it's designed that way. So, that leaves me either pushing up here, which is where I presume these commanders are to go and kill them all, or pushing down here. And this area is totally open. I mean, look at it. This is all open. This is all open terrain here. Then it's open along here. And then it's all open along here, and it's open through this valley bit here. Then it starts to get, 
you know, this is all like hill terrain. I think they want you to use, you know, uh, Alpineers on this mission because there's so many high ground tiles, but... A good tank with uh, readiness on a close combat tile can easily hold out. So, first things first, let's, um... How many overruns does this thing need? I did max it out, stats-wise. Five. Many of these tanks are uh, being converted from anti-aircraft guns, so they've got awards, but they're not. But they've got a lot of development to go. Let's do it. Let's take two tanks that need development from the from the ground up. Give them long-term KV. Zero slots. Field repairs. We're not going to have this advantage forever. This advantage where we deploy the KV and it's just so superior that no one can touch it. <clears throat> this is not a... Uh, An advantage that we are going to have forever. Ooh, artillery support. Hmm. Good thought, good thought. Having a thought here. Where's my KVs? Where's KV Gen? There they are. I just had a thought. Just had a thought, but let me finish my first thought. Field repairs. Uh, overwhelming attack. How to build the other KV. Probably reduced slots, because it's very expensive slot-wise. I had artillery support on it previously. Let's go with leadership because that's actually a training tool that will help this guy level up. Okay, I had a thought actually. What if I sent one of my own paratrooper groups along? Take this one. Should we take this one? Why don't we take a low grade one that we just. We're not so concerned if we lose it. Let's take a low grade infantry that we're not so concerned if we lose it, but at least has some experience. Okay, so, if I send one of my own paratroopers, and I give them, um, artillery support, turning them effectively into a really nasty artillery, aggressive counterattack, meaning that hitting them is going to hurt, although readiness might be even better if I have it. And unyielding so that they won't they won't be suppressed by anything. They're gonna fight at full strength at all times.
I can send them along with the two sets of auxiliary full scrim Jaeger, which unfortunately disappeared, but I'll have to rebuy them. Are you going to deploy in your air transports? Yes, okay. You know, sometimes it's a bit of a mystery as to whether they're going to deploy in air transports or not. Okay, sweet. So what we can do now is... This this guy is going to be like a linchpin that's going to help defend. Right, I know the weather is going to be bad, but I'm still going to take spy planes. They're just too cheap. Too inexpensive to not take. Okay, infantry, infantry, tonks. So I actually have an issue now. I don't have enough units deployed to take advantage of all my heroes. <laughs> I've actually, I've reached now peak hero saturation. Alright, this is my distraction recon. This is the one that's also, yeah, these are both my distractions. What heroes have I got left? And are they worth trading? Let me just take fast liner off you for a second to see what I've got. I've got Ignore's Entrenchment line around. It's my overwhelming attack there. Let's put that back. Let's downgrade the strength of these a little bit. There is a supply hex here, but I can't get to it because there's a freaking bunker sat on top of it. Which is nice and helpful. So I'm going to presume that I will not be able to repair my stuff for this mission. Let's bring the meat shields. Because... Might be able to use heroes to make them interesting. Okay, surrender bridge engineers. <laughs> oh, I can't repair them though. Good point, good point. Can't repair them. No repair, no repair hex. So once they get injured, that's it, they'd be dead. Need something sturdier. Oh, you know what I could bring? Can't, don't you cost only... Doesn't this guy have a slot cost of like two? Bring you back out of retirement for a low deployment mission. You can be my surrender guy. Overwhelming attack. And 
either shock tactics or envelopment both work. Zone of control, that'll do. Oh man, Ignore's Entrenchment is actually a good hero. I should really deploy it. Entrenchment killer. Ignores entrenchment is better than entrenchment killer. I'm just thinking about my legendary guy. <laughs> oh, I should deploy my legendary guy. Just for that sweet, sweet experience, uh, prestige. All right, let's temporarily take distraction off these two. I know that they're good in that role, and I will put it back later. money. My greed overwhelms my sense of uh, caution. Ah, we'll keep one distraction. Thing is, I've just, I've got to. I've got to deploy over strength units because as my units get chipped down, their effectiveness drops. And as long as I can keep their effectiveness at a baseline level, i.e. vehicles at 10 or above, infantry at 15 or above, as long as I can keep that baseline level of effectiveness, then it's okay. Or, you know, if they've got field medic or... Um, if they've got field medic, then it's not such a problem. But if they don't, you know, a unit that's uh, that's creeping down towards six, seven, six, five strength becomes useless and becomes a liability. No ability to repair it. Yeah, there's no supply hexes on the whole rest of the map. The only supply hex is this one, which has got this stupid bunker on it, which I could delete. I don't know if that would cause a mission failure or anything. I don't know. I'll leave it where it is. And if I need to repair something desperately, I will consider disbanding the bunker. <clears throat> I don't know if it has any effect on the plot at all. Okay, that's it for deployment. I know it said in not to take any aircraft, but I don't feel comfortable dropping my AA guns and also dropping my fighters. Because the enemy does have airports. I'm not so foolish as to believe that we are just going to happily waltz through the Greek countryside and not face any air contest contesting at all. <clears throat> if there were no airports on the map, then I would, you know, be convinced. Otherwise, not a chance. Alright, that's it for deployment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.